Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we get one of life's great pleasures, uh, a Sudoku by Marty Sears called The Big Zipper, uh, which I, I guess is a pun on The Big Dipper. And this is an enormous zipper line puzzle. Um, so you can see, I don't know. How, oh, no, I, I wondered whether if I clicked on this, it would highlight the whole line it doesn't but this line here is a gigantic beast of a thing sort of looks like a, a slightly deformed octopus to me um, and this, this puzzle actually has four stars out of five on Logic Masters Germany so it might be the hardest of the zipper line puzzles that we've attempted on the channel this is this new rule the zipper line where if we look at this square the way it works is that that digit uh, let's say it was a six these two digits have to add up to six and these two digits have to add up to, this, to six. So if you go an equal distance from the center, the two digits on either side of the line have to add up to the digit in the middle of the line. So it's a really simple rule, but it has led to some breathtaking puzzles with beautiful logic. And I've no doubt that Marty's puzzle will be right up there. Marty, I mean, Marty produces puzzles at an incredible rate. And if you go to his Logic Masters Germany play, page, they're all rated incredibly highly. Um, and yeah, we, we, we could almost have one day a week devoted to Marty's puzzles and, uh, and the channel would, pro would probably be better for that, which is incredible. Um, so Marty is, is just a wizard of Sudoku. Um, and um, we're going to have a look at the puzzle in a moment or two's time. The first thing, though, I want to do after introducing the puzzle is to say a huge thank you to all those of you who have supported our Kickstarter, which which has now finished. Um, now, this, this is to make um, what we hope will be just an absolutely beautiful Christmas present to uh, all of the puzzle nerds out there. So the, the way it works is there's going to be a novella, which, which Peter has finished writing now, um, Peter C. Hayward. Um, we've got a whole world of Fog of War Sudoku puzzles around that, uh, or built into the novel, and then this beautiful art by Hayley Mooney. Um, and because because people have been so generous and supported it so generously, it's going to be a really, really stellar thing, um, even better than we'd, we'd, we'd envisaged when we first came up with the idea. So um, we're going to be getting cracking now, creating the finished thing in time for Christmas Day and getting it out to you. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you. Um, we really do appreciate it and we will make you something that you will really, really like. Um, what else do I need to mention? Is there anything else? I've got a couple of birthdays, actually. We've got all our stuff over on Patreon, etc. You know about that already. Let me do a couple of birthdays. Alex, Alex, you've turned the big 3-0 today. Uh, and I know this because your older brother, Gary, wrote to us. And I think, I think Gary might be making you chocolate cake today. That's a good big brother to have. Um, and Gary also said that you were a brilliant solver, Alex. Um, he said it rather regretfully. He said that you're better than he is. Um, so Alex, thank you for watching the channel and I hope you have a brilliant birthday today. And then Paula. Paula, you've turned 18 today. Um, and I think, yeah, we've heard from your boyfriend. Is it Nicola? Is it, I think your boyfriend is Nicola, if I remember rightly, and the two of you solve together. But Paula, on your 18th birthday, I hope you have an absolutely brilliant day today and I hope you have some Italian chocolate cake, um, which I have had and it tends to be rather good. Now, all that said and done, let's have a look at Marty's puzzle and I will read you the rules, which will not take long. So have I got the right glasses on? Yes, I do. Good. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. So we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column and in every three by three box. Along a lavender zipper line, any pair of digits that are the same distance from the center cell of the line marked by a spot. So we have actually only got, I think, three zipper lines in this puzzle sum to the digit in the cent in that center cell. So it's exactly what I said before. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, I know one secret about zipper lines, and that is that the o only place you could put a nine on this enormous line or any zipper line is in that central cell. Because imagine that was a nine. Then, then we'd be saying that this cell plus this cell was equal to this cell, which will always make this central cell higher than nine. And there are no Sudoku digits higher than nine. So I suspect what we have to do to start this one is to have a look at where nines can go throughout the puzzle. Um, one of those three. Nine, oh, nine in box eight, maybe. 
Yeah, nine in box eight in only one of three places, and all of those are in the bottom row. Oh, no, I thought we were going to get two places in box nine, but then I forgot the zipper line circle itself. Uh, oh, okay, there's two ways you can see this, but look at column uh, column seven's the simplest way to see it. Where is nine in column seven? Well, it's in one of two places. And uh, no, uh, wait a second. Uh, no, it's not quite, it doesn't quite align. Hang on, let's, let's check the central box as well, because... Oh no, the central box is useless actually. Oh, for some reason I, I was thinking it was just two places. It's not even that, it's three places. Oh dear, okay. Um, that's no good. That's not the way we start the puzzle. Okay, so what we've probably got to do instead is to... I mean, I can say immediately that that cell's got to be... One, two... Well... The highest digits I could keep off the line. If I put 9 and 8 there, that would still be a 7, wouldn't it? Yeah, there's no way. If you, if you put 6 on this line... No, there have got to be then three different ways of making up six in two digits. Oh no, hang on, I'm doing the I'm doing the arithmetic wrong. I was looking at this line as being those two plus those two plus those two. That's absolute nonsense. This it we're summing those two to get to this digit. We're then summing that one and that one. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so what I was doing then was absolute. Well, although it still applies, doesn't it? It's it's still the same sort of point. The absolute minimum I could make those six digits is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there is simply no way that this can be any less than seven. Because each of the, if, if we did make these one, two, three, four, five, and six, the six in that um, six tuplet would still have to be added to one, at least a one on the other side of the line. Um, ah. But, oh no, that's not, oh no, that is, that is true, that is true. Okay, if I did make this a seven, how would the top row work? Because I couldn't, I couldn't now put seven on the line, could I? So I'd have to put seven there in the top row, and now where, I, where would I put eight and nine in the top row? I can't put them both in this square. So there would now be at least an 8 on the line, which once added to another digit would make this square supposedly at least a 9. So there is no way that this is 7. Oh, siren outside. Um, probably coming to take me away at long last. Um, loony bin for you, Mr. Anthony. <laughs> um, now, hang on, let's think about that. So that digit... Yes. Okay, it's straightforward, isn't it? Okay, right, it's straightforward. Where is that digit in in the top row? That's 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 the most succinct way we can see to start the puzzle, because this digit cannot go on its own line, so it cannot go in those squares. It cannot go in its own box, so it goes there. Um, yeah, okay, and now where does it go in box five? It cannot go on its own line. So it goes there. Oh, this is lovely. It's so weird that that geometry's just been sit. It has, look, it just goes, this is gonna go around the grid, isn't it? It's just obvious once you have the right thought. Or it might not go around the grid entirely, but it goes, it, it went somewhere. One of those is the red digit. Um, can't put the red digit there. So the red digit's in one of those squares. The red digit is in, oh, actually. Yeah, look at this. So the red digit is in one of those squares in box six, and therefore it's not there, but also it's not here. So it is there. That's the only place it can go now. Um, oh, hang on, I was about to delete the nine there. That's not right, is it? No, that's not right. Sorry, I was I was misleading myself. It's true to say this isn't red, but it's not to say true to say that has to be nine because all we're doing is pinpointing whatever this digit turns out to be. So, 
Okay, and then can we do any better than that? I don't think so. We can't we can't put it on the line. So I think it's got to be in one of those squares in box four. But then in box it seems to have a few different possible positions in box um box seven down here. Okay, so how do we improve upon this? Indeed, can we improve upon it? I don't see a way of doing that. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm wrong, actually. That one is pinching another... That one's pinching that one. I'm getting confused between my eights and nines here. That's got to be a red digit. These are not red digits. That's a red digit. So this is a red digit. So these are both eight and nine. And we've got we've got an X wing of red redliness left. If we put red on there, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Because that would mean that red had to be an eight. Oh, that doesn't work. Right. If you put um, if this is a red cell. It's on a zipper line that's not the central cell. So we know it's not nine. So it would have to be eight. But that would make this a nine. And this can't be nine because then I couldn't put a nine in box eight, which is rather lovely. So that square is not red. This is red. This is red. And now I've got to be careful here because I'm still not sure, am I? Whether red is eight or nine. I mean, I strongly suspect it's going to be nine. Um just because it would give Marty the most flexibility in terms of constructing this great big line. But how do we prove it? We could... Maybe we prove it by thinking about what happens if it's eight, actually. Because if it's eight... No, what I was about to say is not even true. I was about to say it's very difficult to put four on the line, but 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 that's because I'm confusing myself again as to how the how the zipper line works in box one. I keep trying to view it as those two plus those two plus those two giving this digit. So I was about to say four has if this is eight because I can't put four on the line. I was going to say one of those has to be a four. That is total and utter gibberish. Naughty brain, naughty brain. Yeah, because I mean, if, uh, let's just try and get this right. I don't think that can be four. That one might be able to be four. If that's four, that's three away. Yeah, then that could be four. And that's fine. Those those two cells are an equal distance away from this, the middle here. They're three cells. So they could both be four. And then four could be on the line in box one. So it's not that. What we might have to do, which is a terrifying thought, is to colour you know, the colour the fact those two add up to red. This one and this one add up to red. This one and this one add up to red. This one and something over here add up to red. Uh, the other thing that I'm also seeing ah, oh, that feels like that doesn't work. Let me think about that for a second. No oh, oh, just going down a rabbit hole again. This is just why is my brain not working? Just had another a whole series of thoughts that I, I thought were going to be absolutely, you know, interesting. And it's just nonsense. Oh, goodness me. Now, I was trying to think about how this line and this line worked. And how they impacted on what was... I mean, these obviously... Uh, 
No, it's, it is right. It is right. Oh, good brain. I see. Ah, okay. Okay. So here is the point. I'm just double checking this. Hang on before I before I I indulge in a flight of reverie, which is absolutely not sensible. Yeah, I think it is right. I think it is right. The question is, where is that digit? Yeah, where is that digit in row one? And the answer is we don't know. But the answer is somewhere in this string, isn't it? It's somewhere along there. Let's just pick a cell. Let's say it's there. Now, what does that mean about this digit? Well, it, it means that this digit is the complement of green that adds up to um, this, the red digit, isn't it? So let's make this two for, example, for the sake of exposition. If that's two, then that's two. And if this was nine, then that would mean this is a seven. But, but here's the kicker. Where is this digit in column, not, column one, sorry? And the answer is, again, we don't know, but we do know it's somewhere on the purple line. And therefore, when you place that, well, it doesn't matter where it goes, let's put it there. When you place it down here, what's this digit now? Well, the answer is it's the complement of, 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 of two that adds up to nine. So it's also seven, and that would put a seven there. And now I've got two and seven looking at this box, but I can't put seven into one of these two squares because un this is the one case where my brain is not misleading me about box one. Those two add up to nine. So if one of those is seven, what is the other one? Two, and it won't work. So this is right. And this is, this is so, so, so you may then say, well, hang on, haven't you just proved the puzzle's broken? Not quite, not quite, because there is one different, there is one way that this can work. And that is if the complement to two over on this side of the grid was the same digit as two. Because if that was the case, what would then happen? Then we could, so what I, what I mean is, imagine, um, imagine these, uh, no, imagine, imagine this digit, the green digit, let's cross this out. Imagine the green digit goes here in row one. And imagine the green digit goes here in column one. So these two are the complements. We're adding, so two green is equal to this. What does that tell us? It tells us, that's eight. That's the only way it can work. And then if we plug four into, into there, we don't have the problem with two digits having to be placed into basically that square in order to avoid the problem. That's absolutely beautiful. It is an, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely idea. Now, well, hang on, let's go back because what, what's, well, this is telling us straight away that red is eight. It must be eight. We don't know where green goes. We just know it's somewhere, but we know it's four. We know green is four now, and there's a four up there, and there's a four up there in the same position opposite one another. Uh, does that mean that's nine? Yes, yes, it does. That's, that's actually clear, isn't it? Well, hang on. Yes, it does, but also I get loads of other nines. Because when I've placed this red digit, yeah, when I've placed the red digit, look, I've consumed lots of other cells that could have been nines. So those two seem to have to be nine. That seems to have to be nine. Oh, well, let's look at this. Okay, so nine is, is in one of, that is true. If you look at it, nine is in one of those two squares in the central box. So nine must be there. Um, now, do we get the nine? We do. We do get the nine down here. Nine goes there. Ah, oh, no, I thought I'd broken it, but I haven't. Nine can go here. So nine goes here. And this is this must be all the nines. I feel like I've written in a whole load of nines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. All nines are done. All eights are done. And probably what the next task is going to be is to think about fours, isn't it? So, 
Okay, let's, how are we going to do that? Where is, yeah, the thing is the further away from this cell we get, let's just go through slowly, shall we? Let's just go through what will we know. Let's make those blue. Well, I did it again. I'm so, so bad. Um, those two, those two, make those orange. Now, this one and that one are the same, aren't they? And that one and that one are the same. But none of these that I've just highlighted here. Oh, actually, maybe that's a better way of doing it. Hmm. Okay, I've changed my mind. I was going to try and chase fours around the grid. I'm not going to do that for a moment because I've just realized something about yellow and orange. Yellow and orange are not the same. What, what do I, sorry, what do I mean by that? Well, in terms of the number of different ways that pairs along this zipper line can add up to eight, there are, for this zipper line, there are four different ways. You could have double four, we've seen that already, and that is what we're gonna have somewhere down row one and column, column one. So double four is an option. We could have one and seven, so this could be one and seven, or it could be two and six, or it could be three and five. Now, none of these digits here, obviously that I've already highlighted in box one, can be four. So these, these pairs, um, well, the blue pair is either one, seven, two, six, or three, five. The yellow pair is then not the blue pair, clearly, because this yellow cell sees both blue digits and it's not four. So this yellow is something else and its counterpart goes here on the line. And that means this, yeah, these two yellow cells form a one, seven, two, six, or three, five pair. So come to this square, which is orange, and orange ends up here, the, or, or the complement of orange ends up here on the line. So if this was three, this square here would be five. But, but, but notice, that this, this orange cell sees both flavors of yellow and this orange cell sees both flavors of blue and it sees four. In other words, these three colors that I put into box one are the three different flavors of eight pair that are not double four. And what that makes me think is perhaps what we're meant to do here is to try to find more places in the grid where we can find cells that see all either all three colors or all well they won't see all four colors but see four is now restricted more than i thought in box two it's got to be in one of those squares hasn't it if that was four, goodness only knows, where's that on the line? Right, let's count. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the eighth cell. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if that's a four, that's a four. Now, does that work? Let's just have a quick look around the grid and see if we can... See if we can either prove or disprove that. I don't, I don't know. I see that's the other worry. Uh, this, well, this might be a good reason to continue this coloring as well, is that otherwise what we're inevitably going to end up doing is trying to pair up all the digits around, along this line. And that feels incredibly difficult to do, you know, to sort of go to that cell and then count how many how many that is away from the end of the line and that's going to have an equivalent down here somewhere and we're going to try and work out what it is. I don't like that. I'm, I think I'm going to carry on with this. So let's, these two squares, I think uh, we, we don't know what they are, but we do know that they're yellow and orange, don't we? Um, now, so the, the, what that means is that 
So the next two cells from this direction are the complements of these digits. So they are also yellow, oops, yellow and orange. So oh, this is where it gets really difficult. Yeah, okay, I'm going to change my I'm going to change my colouring again. Um because I can't I can't really work out now. I know th no, see that I was about to say I know that one and that one are the same. They are not the same, they are the complement of each other. Right, okay. So we'll make these three squares. We'll give those a flash. We'll make those grey flash digits. So we'll make the other digits their black flash digits. So, th so, th so that's making it very clear that the grey and the black digits are different from one another. But the complement of grey blue is black blue. So if this was a 3, you'd know this was a 5. If this is a 1, you know this is a 7. Um, and now, now what does that tell us? So that tells us these two, which are the complements of these two, are both black flash digits. Right, and that is actually immediately useful because now where now where do yellow and orange black flash digits go in this row? They've got to go there by Sudoku of all things. I mean, it's outrageous. Marty's making me do Sudoku so early in his Sudoku puzzle, but needs must. Um, so now, well, now we must know. What are those digits? They're grey flash digits, aren't they? Because they're the complement of these two. So now... Right, so now that digit is blue. That's beautiful, actually. That's really, really weird. Um, but let me just go through why I think that's blue. It's not four. We can see that. It's definitely not four. Now... Could it be orange flash or, or could it be an orange digit? No, it sees orange black and one of these is orange gray. So it's definitely not orange. Could it be yellow? No, it sees yellow black and one of these is yellow gray. So it's not yellow. So it must be blue and it's not blue black. So it's blue gray. And now this square, I must know that by Sudoku. That is, that is yellow gray, I think. I think yellow grey has not appeared in this row. So that's yellow grey. But now, now this is going to be beautiful because we can actually carry on our line now. So if that's yellow grey, that's that digit which must be yellow black. Or that's the opposite ends of the of the zipper. Now that if that's blue grey, that is blue black. Oh, which is beautiful because look at this where's blue black now in the top in box two it's got to be there so that's not four so four has moved into one of those squares oh come on yeah absolutely beautiful where is four in box five now four is vertical now four is not a colored digit oh well unless it's green <laughs> but that and and this is an eight zipper so we can't put four in either of these because the other the other wing of the zipper will also be four. So that's four by Sudoku. Oh, near. Oh, no, this is beautiful again. Oh, look, look, there's something I've, we might as well take the low hanging fruit as well while we see it. That is blue, black. So that the other end of the zipper must be blue, gray. But now where does four go in this box? So this is what I, this is what I just saw, but I didn't see it in the context of blue. I saw it in the context of four. So this is four by force. And now I want to say that can't be four, can it? Because if that's four, that's saying that is a four, which we've proved is impossible. So that's not four. This is four, which means one of these is four, which now means one of these is four in order to be the complement of eight over there. Four, right, four is in one of those two cells. And mm, I suspect we're gonna to have to count along the line to work out 
exact oh, but hang on if that's a four have we done have we worked out what the complement of this is no we haven't no we haven't have we so the complement of this is, is that digit that's got to be a four so that's four that's four and that's four good grief and now four in the corner means that's a four right down there by the, the zipper line logic this is just beautiful it's quite beautiful now that's four i think by sudoku but hang on what we do oh i see so what 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 we need to check is that this and this are in the same position on the zipper now i think they must be by the logic but but we need to check that so one two three four five six seven eight nine it's the tenth digit from the end of the zipper starting here so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and it's the tenth from the other side as well so that suggests we've got that right let's make all of those green and we will think again so we know what that is now don't we because that must be the other digit we've not put in this box which is orange gray and if that's orange gray that is orange black and in this box now do we know more than we used to we know that oh okay one thing we know is that these are not yellow we know they're not four so this is either a pair of blues or it's a pair of oranges um i don't know how we know that to be honest okay i'm not sure about that there's probably a way we know that but i don't know what it is um can we do something with this now because this ah yeah yeah yeah. okay that's a seven isn't it this is a seven because four can't go on this line anymore so the, the way i'm seeing this is as i can see they've got to be two ways of making this corner digit add up those two add up to the corner digit these two add up to the corner digit that immediately removes th three and four from the options for the corner because three could three could only be a one two pair and you can't repeat one two there and there four can only be a one three pair so that doesn't work so we're immediately looking at five six or seven but five has two options one of which is one four that doesn't work six has two options one of which is two four which doesn't work so this must be seven and the, right the corollary of that is that this must be the other digit of one six two five and three four um that add up to seven as sort of pairs in the box so that must be three because it, because you can't put three on the line because if you put three on the line you'll need four opposite it and four is there so that is three now that tells us i think something about i want to say that tells us something about five doesn't it because this is on this line now what's <laughs> what's the equivalent of that one is it that one oh i don't know i think it is that one so that three is nearer to the end of the line so that is a five is what we've just discovered so five but we don't know what color that is do we that would be a lovely thing to learn that would be a lovely thing to learn how do we work that out then i don't think we can we know if that's five we know that that the yellow pair is now not three five the yellow pair is either one seven or two six because because this five sees both flavors of yellow so these two have to be the complement of one another on the line and i don't really know how i meant to how am i meant to think about that is there a way to do that is it going to be hmm 
Sorry, if you can see this, well done. I'm not quite seeing it. If, if this one, this one is either an orange black digit, which would make this a three. So if that's orange black, that's orange as well. So that, that, would, that would make this a five. It would make this a five. And that's two digits towards the end. So it would make this a three. That's if this is orange. But if this is blue, then that becomes a three. Um, and that would make, so if this one becomes a three, that, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, I'm talking nonsense, I think. No, if that's, no, I must be talking nonsense, because if that's blue, if that's blue gray, you can see it's the same as that one, that one, that one. They all become fives. That almost looks likely to me. How would we disprove that? We'd have to plot the threes that were all opposite them and work out where they all went. Ah, okay, so I can't quite finish this. Well, when I say can't quite, I can't at all finish this off at the moment. I know those two. It's not going to be the seven here, is it? I can't do something clever with that, maybe. So seven. Hmm. I mean, seven is going to be on the line in one of those squares. I mean, that is a, a very marginal point, but it is true. And that digit is near this digit. Now, that digit is the equivalent of that one. So we'd have a whole sequence of digits down there that could include a one for what that's worth, which is probably not very much. OK, so I'm sorry about this. I'm not spotting how to do this at all. Um, what about. Could we use. Some sort of Sudoku jiggery pokery <laughs> that might also be worth thinking about. This this is either this this digit intrigues me. I sort of feel like I must know what that is. Ah, I do know what that is. That sees both flavours of blue. Oh, for goodness sake, Simon. This is so, it's so obvious. I didn't realise that, obviously, but I have gone to the right place because that square does see both flavours of blue and we know it sees both flavours of yellow. So that's orange. Now, what orange is it? It's orange black because orange grey lives in these squares. So that's orange grey. But I think the key is going to be that one. That one has become blue grey. And therefore, the complement of blue grey on the big zipper, the title, is three. So we get five, three. So that is now blue black. Um, and if that's three, that's the complement of what? Uh, this is this one is the well. All the blue blacks have to be three. Why don't we just why don't we just trust our pencil marks and change all of the greys into fives? And will that do us proud? Maybe. Let's double click the threes and just see. So we can see from that that three is in one of those two squares in box four. So three is in one of us. Ah, so three is in one cell in box seven. Now we can color that cell. That's blue black. I can color that cell blue black by Sudoku. Uh, that's probably been available. Sorry, I didn't didn't realize that. But th if that's blue, black, that's blue, gray. So that's five. Um, that's five, actually. And can we get all the fives done? Yes, we can get a five there, which is blue, gray. And we can maybe we can't do the bottom one. Five is in one of two places in this box. Right. And that's got to go opposite a two on this line. So either that is a two 
or that. Oh, that doesn't do it. <laughs> uh, one of those two is a two, we've now learnt. Um, right, okay, let's try the threes then. Let's see if we can do better with the threes. We have got quite a lot of threes. But there is a three in one of these two. Okay, and that's got to be capable of having a five. Oh yeah, look, there's a five down here. Uh, yeah, I, I, I sense, actually maybe I'm wrong. Um, yeah, I might well be wrong about what I was about to say, so I won't say it. Okay, so uh, let me think about this. So we just got this square, didn't we? Which is one towards the end from the second four, which is second four. So that's this four. One closer to the end is that one. So that's got to be a three by that logic, which means that's a three. So we get two threes on the line in adjacent cells. So we must get two fives on the line in adjacent cells. So that's got to be a five by that logic. And that, that sorts out the five in this box, which gives me a two on the other end of the line. So these are now a one six pair to finish off box nine. And we can do loads more shading, I think. So all of those are blue gray. All of the threes in the grid are blue black. Um, we've got a two in the grid now, which is useful. That because places a two in box six. Well, I thought it was going to be useful. Actually, no, maybe it's not. Okay, so there's a one or a six in that square. Now we know what we know. That square is either yellow or orange black. Um, okay, I'm not sure what that means. Um, what are those squares? One, six, and seven. So the counterpart to these digits on the blue, well, that, that might be interesting. If, that, if that's locking into there, which is where it feels it is on the line to me, then we're going to know, we're going to know things. We're going to be able to deduce that digit. Right, hang on, let's work this out. So it's, it's this four again, isn't it? And this four is the second four on the line from the middle. So one, it's that four. And it's towards the middle from there. So it is those three digits. And they have to be one, seven, and two because they have to be the complement of these that add up to, to eight, which means that we've not put six in this line. So that's a six, that must be two to add up to eight. So orange is now two and six. Well, in fact, we know that's two. So orange black is always two and orange gray is always six. Um, well, that's now become a one for what that's worth. So that can't be orange because orange orange's complement is not is never one. So that is now yellow. This is definitely orange and that must be the orange two. It's a brilliant idea, this, isn't it? It's just remarkably clever how you can just sort of puzzle around this big zipper line and it 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 sort of I don't want to say it fills itself in because that 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 it doesn't do that but it it's it's remarkable the logic that's buried in this now that digit is nearer to the center so that is the complement of that digit I think so that's not six this is a one seven pair um, it'd be good if we could, can we do, oh, we can do those. So that's six and that's one. So six is now here by Sudoku. We might have to resort to Sudoku for a moment <laughs> in the Sudoku puzzle. <laughs> one, three, and seven there. Okay, that's a one or a seven, isn't it? That's a shame, one, three, seven. Ah, but that's not three. Oh, look, I've not put all my threes in the grid. That was remiss of me. So in this column, I've not put two. So that must be a two at the top. This must be a one or a seven. I see, so we've got a, oh, we've got a seven here. We've got a one here. We've got a seven here. That's, so seven gray is now, sorry, yellow gray is now seven. So that must be a one, that must be a one. 
um, this square, the central square, is 6 or 7. So that must be 6 or 7 as well, because we've done all the digits. So that's become a 1. And we said that was the equivalent of that. So that must be 7. 6, 1, 6, 7, 7, 1. I feel I've been a bit sh um, um, slipshod here in terms of how I've approach this last bit of the puzzle i could have made a mistake i hope i haven't but oh i've got a two seven deadly pattern that's not good oh but i suppose i can resolve it by reference to this because if so this one is the equivalent of that one so that's got to be two that's got to be seven that's got to be seven that's got to be two what on earth is that six apparently by sudoku now i'm not stopping don't worry i am going to make absolutely sure that I've labelled everything correctly. So that must be orange. That's not yellow. This one is a six, which is orange. That must be a seven, which is yellow, which is not orange, therefore. Um, OK, and then we have to. So nine was the digit that never got coloured, I think. All of the ones are yellow black. All of the sevens are yellow grey. All of the threes are blue black. All of the twos are orange black. All of the sixes are orange gray. And we're just left with nines uncolored. And maybe we've got the puzzle right. Yes, we do. And that's very, very cool indeed. That is a lovely, lovely Sudoku puzzle, as, as usual, from Marty. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I, I loved that. I loved that you could... I love that there was the simple, not simple logic, but there was elegant logic at the start, which was to consider this digit's position in row one and column one and realize that therefore you couldn't have, um, th these couldn't be different. This digit couldn't have a different partner on the line. I mean, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. And then I loved, I loved the fact that the way Marty had designed the line was that you could figure out that this digit was not in the same pairings as this one or this one. So all of a sudden we were able to start coloring. And what did I do after that? I, I think I got stuck for a while then. I can't remember how I, un oh yeah, I cannot remember how I unstuck myself. Well, in the end, yes, I worked out that digit, didn't I? I worked out that digit had to be blue and I think that that maybe that got me on the track with the fours I can't quite remember what I did after that but whatever it was it was extremely enjoyable Marty as usual take a bow my friend I really enjoyed that very much indeed let me know in the comments whether you had a go and how you got on I enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic